Welcome to the Call by God podcast. I am the co-host Adni Godin, and I am with my brother, host Nixon Silvani. Nixon, say hi to our audience. Hey, audience. <laughs> <laughs> Today, y'all, Nick is going to share his Call by God journey. When we first started this podcast, many of you read and or listened to my Call by God journey, and Nixon just thought it was fitting for him to share his journey with God. So, Nixon, before we begin, I would like for you to tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Oh, man. Like, where can I begin? I got to keep it short and sweet, right? Yep. You got 30 seconds. Uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I've been married for a while now. I'm not going to put no numbers out there because my wife might be watching this. and She might say you got the numbers wrong. Uh, and I have two lovely children. God has blessed me with two lovely children. Um, I'm a man of God. Amen. I love, love the Lord, y'all. And um, I'm from sunny South Florida. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I appreciate that you shared that because, you know, sometimes people are married and are there are people out there who want to get married. And, you yeah. know, when we get to your through your journey, you're going to share about you and your wife. Right, so right. I'm, I'm excited about that. So let's get started. <laughs> let's get started. I want you to share with the audience the beginning, the genesis of Nixon Silvani, the early years. Mm. And we'll go from there. The early years of Nixon. First of all, I want to say this. Um, I know when it comes to sharing one's life and sharing one's journey, I know sometimes we think about the impact that a testimony could have on one's life. Mm -hmm. But I know I'm, I want to just set the stage off that everything that I share is for the glory of God. Amen. I don't want the spotlight to be on me. The whole purpose of me sharing my story is to highlight God. Amen. To show you that that God could could move an individual's life as he see fit. Amen. That God is sovereign. Amen. And that's what I want people to see out of this, that when they hear my story, they watch my story, that they could see like, wow, like I could relate to that. Amen. Though they may not be in the church, they could say, I could relate to that. Because I always tell people, you never know what God is doing in people's lives. Like God is sovereign. He could do whatever he wants. Amen. So, but I think my life is very unique in a sense, just like everybody else got their own unique story. Yeah. And I think it's also right that I go back to the beginning and I shared with you offline, you know, Moses, you know, when you talk about Moses, one of the powerful leaders in the Bible, yeah, we, it goes back to the beginning when yeah. he was put in a mini arc. Yeah. Yep. Got, yeah. Got put in a now. Yeah. And then you see the older Moses that didn't make it into the promised land. So, you know, his, his life was in a sense captured since mm -hmm. he was a baby. It was chronological. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So you look at those things, you're like, wow, you could tell this dude had a calling on his life. Yeah. And even Jesus, when Jesus, baby Jesus, you yeah. know, all the way to the point, all the way to the point of, of the cross. Yeah. So I think, you know, we have, as humans, we have similar experiences. Yeah. You know, the ones that are called, the ones you could tell, like, they got anointed on their life. Some people get it sooner and some people get it, uh, you know, later in life. But in my case, um, I was the first child born in the United States. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All my other, uh, my uh, previous siblings that uh, my mother had were born in, you know, the islands. Okay. And, um, and my mother, she had me in the United States and I just thought that was unique within itself. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I didn't like is, um, at the time, you know, being the fourth child being raised by my mom and there was no dude in the house. There was no man in the house. And if you know anything about seventies or eighties, um, it was a lot of, women raising children yes because island men all they do is just do what they do and just yeah <laughs> shoot the peace sign mm -hmm. so already you know that tells you right that i already got a target on me because why i'm not i don't have a solid foundation i don't have um the ideal home mm -hmm. or what an ideal home looks like according to biblical standards or mm -hmm. god's standards mm -hmm. which is a husband a wife and children. Amen. So automatically that situation was already broken. And then a year after that, my mother ended up having like several other kids. You know, she had one. Of, so let me count one, two, son. Uh, she had like four other kids after that. Okay. So my mother ended up having total. She ended up having a total of eight kids. Mercy. Yeah. So imagine a, a single African-American woman 
raising eight kids. There was one that was already in, in their country, but she was raising seven. Mm. seven and early on i don't know like god gave me this very unique ability because i've seen my mother struggle and the times that i see my mother struggle and i would never forget this and i mentioned this like in other episodes uh i used to see my mother cry mm. you know and dudes used to treat her bad you know because she used to date and then these dudes used to treat her so wrong and to me you know as a kid you don't you don't put two and two together like why is these type of stuff not working like, why is my mama sad? Why is my mom crying? But I remember I was that I was that kid that would like walk up to her and give her a hug. Mm. Like in a sense, like it's gonna be okay. Yeah. You know, so that was the kind of like the early stages of my life, how I was raised up in a, a single family home, you know. And but one thing that I could say I appreciate about my mom, and that's why I kind of like wanted to spotlight my early stages of my life. My mother, she was a religious woman, you know, Catholic, and you know, most Haitians. They're like Catholic. They're into that. Yeah. But at the same time, it you know, we spoke Korea. We understood it, but it, we wasn't as fluent. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like if we go to Haiti right now, they're going to look at us like, nah, you're not a real Haitian. <laughs> they taking your card. They taking <laughs> they your taking card. My, you, you be taking my card. <laughs> hey, y'all, she be taking my card. <laughs> I sure do. And I look, I have no shame in my game. In she taking be his taking card. my card. So, so that's the thing. So what, what my mom did, there's times that we went to Haitian churches. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really understand much. Gotcha. You know, it was like, yes, 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 yes. Like, okay, so it's not, nothing is really hitting the heart like that. Mm -hmm. So what I appreciate about my mom is that, and I don't know, maybe some neighbors had some influential influence with my mom, encouraging her to allow us to go to other churches. So my mother, she used to um, allow neighbors and friends to um, take us to other churches. Good. And, and we didn't do this like faithfully, you know, here and there, she like, you want to go to church. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about all the boys because my mom had like uh, six boys, six okay. boys, two girls. Okay. So imagine a, a woman by herself, no dude. And like, hey, y'all going to go to church. And that's why I'm saying this. I'm saying this on purpose because I want women and men to understand the importance of planting the seed into their child, even if they're not going to do it. Yeah. Have somebody else do it. There's, there's at the least give important. them. Yeah, at least give them that, right? Because yeah, my mom did the same thing for us. Yeah. Um. Every Sunday, she dressed us up. Yep. My brother, my sister, and I, matching dresses. We would go to worship. The bus would be right there. We yep. were never late. Yep. So that's something that I think is extremely important. And, and like, like you said, mm -hmm. mothers and fathers, I believe with every ounce of my being. If you plant that seed in your children, it will germinate. Absolutely. Even if absolutely. you don't take them. If you have a relative that is a Christian, yes. allow them to take the kids. I like that. Because yeah. Because it's like you you may not want Jesus, but they're still young. Yeah. They're still impressionable. Right. They still have, you know, the opportunity to grow. And you never yeah. know. Yeah, and they're doing them a disservice too when yep. they don't take them to a place of worship. Right. Yep. That's why I always try to encourage um parents. Yeah. Like don't don't just put them in sports and say, and then when they turn out a certain way, you be like, oh, they a certain way. Like no, you got to put the word in them. Exactly. So that's what my that's what I appreciate about my mom. And I was sharing this with my sister because my sister was was the baby at the time. And I say, and my sister like, how did our mom find time to do that? I say she's showing up there. She ain't go to church once in a while. She'll go to her Haitian church, but she'll make sure we go to American church. Mm -hmm. And then the times that she she because she didn't bother going to church with us, mm -hmm. she would just cook those Haitian meals. You know those Sunday. <laughs> Those Sunday afternoon meals. Yes. <laughs> she would cook those. Yes. And I was sharing this with my sister. I say, sis, you know, this happened to me when I was a kid. I said, don't you know, I still remember those songs that we sang at Children's Church. Mm. This was years ago. Like we used to sing a song and I'm going to say it. He used to say, um, uh, he's a peach of a soldier. He's the apple of my eye. Mm. I've been stumping through the village where the grapes are growing. High. He's so plum, wonderful. <laughs> and that's the reason why. I've been going bananas for my Lord. <laughs> That's a song that I remember when I was a kid. And it goes to show you the, the power of a seed. Exactly. That never left me. And that's what I appreciate about my mom. But the thing is, my mom also, although she was Catholic, she was into some things that was of the darkness, I believe. Mm -hmm. Because most Haitians are into like voodoo and things like that, you know. And I just kind of like want to put it out there. And, and and this is the reason why I say this is the reason why I say that now that what I know now. Right. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when I was a kid, uh, we went to this place. It was like 
this man he was dressed kind of like Ooga. a priest like yeah mm -hmm. they call him and Ooga. then there's a lot a lot of like strong drinks and um candles mm -hmm. and it, the place was dark it mm -hmm. was a dark place and i remember seeing this tub it was a tub of water uh, like a, this metal tub mm -hmm. and all of us we were all little kids mm -hmm. and then the guy was chanting da -da -da -da. he was mm -hmm. doing saying all kind of stuff and as a kid i don't know what mm -hmm. was going on you don't think about those things like mm -hmm. why why my mom is like why did she bring stuff. me to this type yeah. of stuff and then i'm just seeing like my brothers all them dipping in that water i'm getting dipped in the water and i didn't understand i didn't understand that mm -hmm. you know until of course not spiritual maturity and you're like oh wow it was demonic yeah that's what not of she, god what, what they were doing is in the culture is either two things there's what they call a bain chance uh -huh. or a bain protection which means bain chance is 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 basically about your luck to to make sure you're always blessed and right, lucky, right? right? right. Bain protection is for protection. So they bathe you in this stuff so you can always be protected. Oh, wow. While in, in a Haitian culture, when you don't understand God, that God is your protection, yeah. you look to the voodoo spirits that walk with your family, right? Like, uh, like you know, I shared in my episodes that there are 12 demons that walk in the God and family right, because right. my grandmother was a priestess. Um, and when they believe that, they mm -hmm. want to make sure that the children are covered by those spirits. Right. So that was probably her her reasoning for doing it right, for right. her boys, especially being yeah, boys to, protect them, to, yeah. to do the, the protection right, over the right. boys, not realizing that you're inviting Satan into the lives of your children. Yeah. And I think that's something that Haitians especially have to understand and even those who practice any form of voodooism you're opening your children yeah. up to demonic attack right right because they don't know yeah that's true yeah yeah that's why you know i always say like parents got to be very careful because there's only two sides there's god's way of doing things and there's the devil way of doing mm -hmm. things yeah but i could say even though that she did those things that the one that's why i say the one thing that i appreciate about her is that she made sure we got that word amen we went to we went to somebody's church and heard Jesus. Amen. Although we didn't understand much, but like I said, it's the seed. Amen. But the the turning point, you know, when I was young, what happened to me when I was young, um, my mother died. Mm. And that's how that's when everything changed. Okay. Yeah. So seeing my mom go through all that what she went through, and at the age of eleven, um, I remember prior to her death. She was always back and forth in the hospital, going in the hospital, going outside the country. But we didn't know what was going on. Like, mm -hmm. we was like, as little kids, we like, well, our mom is not around no more. She don't love us anymore. So we're like, we're little kids here. Mm -hmm. And we're asking these questions. But, you know, the adults, they didn't want to tell us the details of what was going on. Like, your mom is probably on the verge of death. She's very, very ill. She's sick. So I guess in a sense, um, the older adults, you know, protected us in a sense because mentally as kids, we probably we wasn't there yet mm -hmm. to handle that kind of truth at that point. Yeah. So I would never forget in I still think about that moment to this day when my aunt came, you know, from her country and she said, you're not going to see your mother again. Your mom died in Haiti. Yeah. So it must have been voodoo related. Yeah. She died in, in Haiti. And I remember um, my auntie sharing the details with her friends that everybody was shocked. So the death is one thing. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, who going to take care of all those kids? Mm. Eight kids. Eight kids. Who, we're not, it, not, we're not teenagers. You're, you're small. We're little kids. Yeah. Who going to take care of these little kids? Yeah. So the whole family was like in disarray, like, oh, man, like, who going to take care of who? So my aunt already had four kids, the three, my three cousins, yeah, like four kids. Mm -hmm. Um, no, five kids at the time that I knew of, five kids. So my auntie already had five kids of her own. Mm. So what my auntie did, and you know, my, my mother had different baby daddies. So my aunt was like, okay, these two gonna go to this mm -hmm. uh family, this group, this one gonna go to that. Mm -hmm. And my auntie said, I'm gonna keep three. Mm. So Monty already had five and she kept three. So she ended up having eight children of her yeah, all together. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And I got to give a shout out to my aunt too, because she didn't have to do it. Yeah. You don't have aunts like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have aunties like that. Trust me. You don't have aunties like Trust that. Trust me. Yeah. So my aunt, 
she took she had five of her own two was already in her country three was already living with her and then she took three so she took me she took one of my older brothers and she took my little sister okay the one that's on fire for the lord right now okay. Okay. <laughs> so she took her so now my aunt went from having three people in the house four including her to not having seven people in the household and it was a one bedroom mm. Yeah, it was a one bedroom. So when my mother, when she said our mother died, you could hear the scream of us. We were all crying. And I still can hear that scream to my ears mm-hmm. to this day. Because we were all little kids. We were crying. We we're hugging each other. And that's why I said, I know we generally loved each other. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, as you grow up, you're like, hold on, you don't love me no more. Yeah. You forgot when our mother died. We were all like this. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how it was. We were all screaming and crying and we hugged each other. But this is what happened, right? So now you don't have no mother. No father. No father. My aunt, my auntie is constantly working. Mm-hmm. And then so we had the streets. Oh, the, the streets. streets yeah. Love them young. We had the streets and then we had corrupt movies. Mm-hmm. So those things were influencing us. So you got the streets and you got like kids that's around our age that, that want to be like hood too. Because there was already gangs around our area already. Mm-hmm. But a lot of them was like dying or they was getting locked up. Gangs. Yeah, the, it was it was the gangs that was coming up around that time, and that whole area became so corrupt. Yeah. So when you see like you know the prostitution, because it was drugs was flooding the streets yeah. of Miami. Yeah. Around that time, the seventies and the eighties, yeah. drugs yeah. was just flooding. Yeah. So it's like that's the corruptness was like the demonic presence was there. Yeah. And it was like innocent, and there were movies coming out. You know, I'm not gonna shine light on those movies right now, mm-hmm. but there were corrupt movies coming out, like gang related movies. Yeah. So yeah. when we and we was kids, we was watching these movies, we'd be like, wow, like we was memorized by that. Like, man, this is like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like this person beef up with this person, they got guns, they killing this person. Yeah. So Hollywood has a very evil way of planting seeds too Absolutely. into the hearts of young children. Absolutely. So while we were kids, we were watching that like okay, you got to be big and bad. You can't let nobody try you. Like, yep. Yeah. So that was another thing. So when my mother died, all, all my brothers and cousins say, hey, we ain't going to let nobody try us no more. We're all we're all one group. We're all one gang. Let's look out for each other. And then when my mother died, we all started getting in trouble, mm. fighting and this and that. That's how I start. You start fighting, jumping and doing all kind of crazy stuff. Like all that church stuff kind of like went out the window. Mm. You started fighting because now you're upset. Mm-hmm. Why, your, why your mother ain't here no more? Yeah. And you know, back in the days, they had mama jokes. Mm-hmm. Oh, you remember those mama jokes? Yes. <laughs> Yo, those, mama, so. Those, uh, those mama and you jokes be like, between the fight like nobody's business. You be like, what? You talk it, about my mama? And your mama not here? And my mama ain't here? <laughs> All right. What time? 2.30? Yeah. I forgot what time school used to get out. It'd be about, on Wednesdays, but, it was 2.30. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. And that's back in the days they used to fight. Now mm-hmm. they don't fight no more. Mm-hmm. But back in the days, that's what we did. We fought. Yeah. But, you know, uh, long story short, um, that's when um, things went on a di- downhill spiral for me. So when I, you know, committed certain activities with certain individuals, it's not like I did them. It's because I was in the in the presence of these individuals. And my auntie seen that I was going on a downhill spiral. She said, wait a minute. You're 11 years old. At this point, I'm 11. Because mm-hmm. my mother died when I was 11. Mm-hmm. And mom was like, uh-uh. This dude, if you're like this now, I can't even imagine how you're going to be when you're a teenager. Mm. So my aunt was like, we need to kind of like. <laughs> now, this is a thing that just, just entered my spirit. That was God. Yeah. That yeah. was God intervening. Yes. Before you got to a space where he wouldn't be able to capture your heart. Yeah. Because the yes. thing that people don't realize is once your heart gets dark, Mm-hmm. It's hard for God to penetrate because you're in a different space. Right, 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 right. So God said his heart hasn't been that corrupted yet. Right. So I need to get him out of this environment. Yeah. He used yes. your aunt to Yeah, I'm forever thankful for her. Yeah. Cause I don't think people realize like when you are raised in certain communities, that's why it's like a cycle. Yeah. If you don't leave that environment, yeah, chances are you're gonna become a product of your environment. Yeah. It's either you're gonna sell drugs, get locked up, or you're gonna die. Yeah. And that, that cycle continues. Then little Junebug is born. Yeah. And he grew up having all kind of baby mamas in that same cycle. Yeah. Drugs, dead, or in jail. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, yeah, you to your point, you are absolutely right. Yeah. That's why I love my aunt. Although she felt bad for what she did, but like you said, that's the hand of God. That was the hand of God. And sometimes we don't know what God is doing in an individual's life, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad that you pointed that out. And that's why I wanted to highlight, like, 
I wanted people to see the glory of God, the Amen. hand of God Amen. in my story. So, yeah. So, you know, when I did an act, you know, several acts, mm -hmm. behavioral, negative behavioral acts, my auntie was like, uh-uh, you're, you're out of here. And my dad lived in the Bahamas. Mm. So at that point, I only see my daddy one time in my lifetime. So prior to that, I only see my dad one time. And then um, when I went to the Bahamas, my auntie, my auntie's so slick. I got to say this story. Mm -hmm. You know, because maybe, so, maybe your mom is thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So my aunt, she, um, my, my older brother and I, we were kids, 11 years old. My other brother was 13. And then she said, oh, you guys, y'all, we're going to take you to see your daddy. Me and my brother got different dads. We're going to take you out to see the daddy, your daddy in the Bahamas. And then you're going to see your uncle. And then we was kids. We're like, yeah, 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 that's cool. I want to see my daddy. I don't have mom anyway, so I want to see my daddy. And then um, it, it was just for the weekend. And then we went to sleep. We woke up. My turn? <laughs> my turn gone. My turn? Where's my turn? <laughs> my turn gone. <laughs> and people don't know what it's my turn. That means auntie. auntie. Yeah, yeah, auntie. So yeah. I said, and I woke up. My, I said, man, auntie is gone. <laughs> I said, uncle, where's auntie? You know, brother and sister, where's auntie? Oh, yeah, yeah, she left. Mata left. She went back to the United States. Wow. So she just went there and just poop. She dropped y'all off because she knew y'all was going to fight her. She knew y'all was, she was, she, first she of all, left. she probably didn't want to cry knowing yeah, that yeah. she's dropping y'all off. And secondly, she didn't want y'all to fight her trying to, you know, come back with her. So yeah. she was like, I got to do this when they're asleep. Right, right, right. So, yeah, she got us with that. And when she did that, and again, things went on a downhill spiral after that because now, my, I'm living with my uncle. But the good news was my uncle was married. Mm. My uncle was married with th three children. Okay. So we lived like in a little shack, okay. a wooden shack. So my uncle had to tell now five kids in the house, but I'm under a husband and a wife. So it's like husband, wife, you children. Get to see yeah, 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 yeah. You see, you see how God is setting this stuff up? Yeah. So, and, and you know, being a kid, 11 years old, and then I said, okay, my brother and I, we looked at each other. We said, look, Auntie Gone, she ain't coming back for us. Mm -hmm. We got to figure this out. So what we tried to do, we tried to go to school in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And then the Bahamas are like, no, we're not going to accept them because they're Americans. Mm -hmm. So what ended up happening was I said, you know what? Um, I can't just be home all day. As the 11 year old, I'm thinking about it. I can't be home all day. Yeah. So we ended up getting, I ended up getting a job at 12 years old in the Bahamas. Wow. So I was working with adults. Wow. I tell my sister all the time. I said, I was 12 years old working with grown men, grown women. Wow. Working with them all day for 10, 12 hours a day. Wow. Monday through sunday wow yeah seven days a week we was to work we used to work and then so what we did my brother and i we was like this my older brother because that's what we worked together mm -hmm. and but the thing about it is i almost died a lot of times because mm. we used to get robbed there because in the, in the islands there's a lot of gangs yep and the gangs is like right next to each other so yep. you cross that line there's another gang you cross yep. another line, there's another gang yeah and they all beef with each other so when I used to work um, at the supermarket, we was like little kids, 12 years old. And then a customer said, hey, take me to my house and drop all these groceries for me. And they, they used to give us tips. Mm -hmm. And then so these gangsters, what they used to do when they see, they used to call us packing boys. Mm -hmm. Little packing boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come here, boy. Come here, boy. Come mm -hmm. here, packing yep, boy. That's it. And then yep. what they used to do, they'd be like, give me the dollar, boy. Mm -hmm. they, somebody probably on here watching this. Yeah. And then we used to get robbed. We used to get robbed. And we'd be like, it's nothing that we could do. We were, we're little kids. So we were like, what you going to do? Fight them? You, do? you ain't in the United States of America. What you so, going to do? Yeah. But the thing that I appreciate about my uncle, like I said, it was God's way early on to show me what a husband and a wife looks like. A he family showing structure. showing you your call, what your call, part of your calling would be. Yeah. That's so, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So we went to, I think it was like some kind of Baptist church mm -hmm. we went to. And my uncle, he used to take pictures there. He used to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. And then, so my uncle, he used to go to church faithfully because mm -hmm. he was actively involved in the church. Okay. So if he go to church, we had to go to church. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing is when I went to church, I'm 12 years old now, you know, the hormones about to kick in. I'm not going there for the word. You I'm looking girl. at them girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking preteen. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at them girls. I'm like, got a little pep in my step. I'm working. I'm not. And by the way, I wasn't going to school. By the way. Yeah, because you said they, they yeah, didn't let y'all go to school. The Bahamas would not allow us to go to school. So hopefully, if you're Bahamian, you're watching this now. Hopefully, it changed now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully, it changed now. But back then, no, we ain't go to school. So wow. I went. I went to church for the girls. My brother and I we used to go for the church for the girls. Until the more and more we kept going to the church. They started talking about marriage in mm -hmm. hell. Mm -hmm. I remember that preacher said something about hell and marriage. 
and fornication, mm. he got my attention then. Gotcha. I was like, what? So you can't do that? You got Outside gotta, of marriage. Yeah. 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 And that's when it, it, I don't know, for some reason, it just stuck with me. Mm -hmm. It stuck with me because um, back in the days, I, I think it's worth mentioning this because so when the preacher said that in the Bahamas at the time, there were Bahamian women that used to love American boys mm -hmm. and men. So my brother and I, we had a lot of crushes. I was scared of girls back then. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd add that in there. It's the yeah. reason why I'm saying this. Yeah. I used to be scared of girls. So girls used to like me. I used to be like, Oh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna say to her? Oh, so I, I yeah. used to, in fact, I used to run away from okay. a girl that liked me. That's gotcha. how bad it was. It's a reason why I'm bringing this. This is gonna make sense later. Gotcha. <laughs> it's gotcha. gonna make sense later. So, um, and and um, where was I? <laughs> you you were uh in church. You went for the girls, and then the preachers preached about hell and marriage. And yeah, hell and marriage. And so I'm hearing the word of God. And that's why I believe that sometimes preachers have to say certain things to trigger the yep. hearts of individuals. Yeah. Because a preacher could just talk about what he pleased and feel good gospel. Yep. Sometimes you need to step on toes. Yeah. Yeah. It don't matter. They could be young or old. It's something yeah. that they may say that the, the child would be like, what? Yeah. And that's what happened to me. So I started thinking, I'm like, wait a minute. The preacher is saying this. Now I'm starting to connect the dots. The preacher is saying this. My uncle is married. Mm. He has a wife. He got children. So it's not like he was shacking. He's, he's a married man. He's a married so man. So I'm putting things together like, okay, so God's way of doing things is husband, wife, children. Yeah. But where I came from, I didn't see that. It was the opposite. Yep. So I'm, I'm starting to like, in a sense, putting all this stuff together. And then, um, so we was in the Bahamas for like three years. Three years, I didn't go to school. At the time, I'm, now I'm 15 years old. Mm. 15 years old, been there for three years. Almost died several times. You know, we was in the shop one time, and I'm going to share this. We was in the shop one time. The dude came and robbed the shop. It was mm -hmm. like a supermarket, equivalent yeah. to like a Publix. Gotcha. Gunmen came in there. They wanted to, um, they wanted the manager because he had the keys to the safe. And here I am. I'm running, running right by the manager. And then they, sh they actually shooting shots like this. Pow, pow, pow. Because he ran. He took off. And I'm like side by side running with the boss, the manager. And then they, they kept missing. They missed. That was God. Yeah. You could feel like the wind. <laughs> Look, that was them angels. Yeah. Nobody, people don't yeah. want to believe it, but that was them <laughs> angels. Them angels was just moving them bullets. Yeah. 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 Because so, of you. Yeah. So the manager and I, we went in the back and then another gunman seen us. He said, there they go right there. Pop, pop, pop. You can see the light because we was back in the storage area. You can see the light flashing towards mm. us. Pop, pop, pop. And the manager went to the freezer. He jumped in the freezer and I followed him. I'm a kid. Mm -hmm. I jumped in and I stood in there too. We shaking. <laughs> like this, we shaking. <laughs> He's like, it's going to be okay, young man. It's going to be okay. But I wanted to bring that up to show you, like you said, the hand of God. The hand of you God. You know, certain things that happen in your life, you be like, wow, God, you was with me. Yeah. So when, and so when I went home that day, I sat on the couch and that's when I started to think about life. Mm. It's like, that had to happen in order for me to really, really have a have an introspective look about my well being, my life. Yeah, I sat down in the chair. I'm like, it was like a what if thing. Mm -hmm. What if that bullet actually hit me? Yeah. What about what if that bullet caught me in the head mm. or, or one of the body parts? Or yeah, I started to think about that stuff, and I'm like, and then I'm slowly connecting the dots. Not fully, fully. yet. Yeah. yeah, I'm starting to do little things like pray before i eat yeah you know because i went to church i mean at least let me pray before i eat yeah so i started to build those kind of habits right and then it was another time i got held at gunpoint mm. the dude said give me all your money i'm a kid you got me on gun i'm a kid dude yeah. and my brother's like look don't pull the trigger that's my little brother don't pull the trigger and the gunman he robbed us he didn't pull the trigger it was like a dark alley so he could have pulled the trigger. Mercy. Yeah. So and then so these things are happening. I'm like, wait a minute. Like life is starting to make sense to me at that yeah, point. Yeah. Right. And and I know I'm going. I'm going. If you no, have any no, questions, I, I need you to go because I'm gonna stop you in a few minutes. Keep yeah. Going. Cause um. So at now at this point I'm 15 years old, and then my aunt felt bad for what she did to us, and that's when she came back.